Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a look at this thing here. This is the Radix flight controller from Brain FPV. I've also managed to get my hands on a Radix power board as well. Now, the Radix flight controller is the new flight controller that's kind of replacing the Brain FPV RE1. Now, that was a flight controller that I built an entire quad around. And in fact, that is probably still my favorite quad to just grab off the shelf if I get a spare half an hour to go out and fly. And that is for a couple of reasons, really. One, it flies fantastically well. The build was fantastic. But secondly, it has this vector-based on-screen display. So the information that's displayed on there, the height information, all that kind of jazz is absolutely beautiful. And I've got really used to that vector-based on-screen display. So I'm really interested in seeing what this new Radix flight controller is all about. Now, the other thing I really like about Radix is the amount of attention that they put into their manuals. Some manuals from some manufacturers read very much like they've been written by the engineers that designed the flight controller that just assume that because they spent the last four months designing this thing, you know everything about the board just like they do. The Brain FPV guys seem to put an awful lot of time and effort into their manuals to make sure that even if you've never built one before, you can follow along and you can get the Radix FPV all put together with whatever you decide with minimum amount of hassle. And I think they need to be applauded for that. I think the manuals even won some awards. I hope that other vendors of flight controllers are taking note and will try and produce manuals as well thought out and written as the ones from Brain FPV. But let me very quickly put up a slide, talk about what's changed between this and the Brain FPV RE1. So the processor itself is the same, the graphics capability is the same, so is the gyro and barometer. The Brain FPV Radix has an SD card slot. I'll get it out of the packet in a second. We can have a look at that. We have six outputs with D-Shot, four serial ports as opposed to two and a half on the Brain FPV RE1. So we have more options to connect things onto this, which is great. The BEC, 5 volt BEC on here has been improved. So it's now two amps versus the one amp that was on the Brain FPV RE1. Now supports 8S and 100 amps continuous 160 amp burst with the Radix PB and that's the thing the other thing that I've got here the power board now the original brain FPV RE1 if you remember back to that series had something called the MPB V2 and that worked beautifully they stacked together and all the power and everything was taken care of without any problem at all there's also some soft mounting here on the Radix and stackable onto a 4-in-1 ESC the other thing that's kind of interesting in here is uh, just before I open this packet, let me just show you a couple of other things on the website. They have thought about how you use this flight controller with several different setups. So with standard quads, where your ESCs are out in the arms, where you maybe have four in one for kind of more racing style quads where you want all the mass in the middle. But interestingly, they're also looking at wing stuff too. And for those of you that are following the iNav development or maybe follow iNav on things like Patreon, you'll have spotted that the iNav team are working, getting iNav working on the Radix as well. So there's an awful lot of development going into the Radix. So it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. So let me just open this and I'll get it out. We can have a quick look. anti-static bag we like that let's just make sure we get everything out of here that's just the bottom of the bag fab so we have a sticker sheet uh, they will get used and we have the little jumper cable for down to a four in one and the radix itself looks like this So there's the SD card at the bottom, and there's the OSD chip, and there's the F4 processor, and you can see there, there is the arrow to point forward. So this little connector here goes into the side like that. So let's open the power board. Oh, in fact, actually, hang on a minute. There are things have escaped. These are the soft mounts. Aha! There is something else. It's white in white plastic, so that's part of the challenge here. 
Okay, so we have some soft mounts as well that will go into the edges. So that's the soft mounting stuff that's in the specs. This is all, these things are always a nightmare to get in. So let's open the power board, have a look at that. This time, try and make sure I get everything out of the case. Another cable, in case you lost the one that came with the flight controller. Make sure there's nothing else in there. Again, nice anti-static bag, like that. And there is the new power distribution board with the current center at the bottom. So that's going to be perfect for a quadcopter. Looks like we've got status LEDs in the corner as well. That's going to be quite pretty. And I'm guessing there's the connection for the battery. So we'd put the RE1 on the top. Really cute. Now, if you wanted to use a four in one with these, then uh, at the moment, uh, going for something like this will probably work. The Hobby Wing four in one. Let me quickly open this. So this is a 4-in-1 BL Heli S D-Shot 600 capable, 2 to 5S LiPo. The BEC on here is 5 volts, 1.5 amps. Let's make sure there's, oh my lord, we've got capacitors and all kinds of things here at the bottom. There we go, it's out. But the really cute thing is, and this is what I'm probably going to use, is the cables here on the Brain FPV RE1 absolutely beautiful straight over the top so if you are going to do a build and you're looking for a four in one to go with your radix that's going to work perfectly then i would definitely look at the hobby wing 40 amp four in one uh, to go with your radix but hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have been thinking about the radix flight controller I'm a big fan of Brain FPV stuff. Uh, most of the pilots that I know that have tried it are massive converts as well. The way this thing goes together is fab, and I wish it had been here a little bit earlier. I'm currently producing a video series, the Easy Quad Build, and if I'd had this a couple of weeks earlier, I'd certainly have been using this at the heart of that quadcopter build, because a really nice thing about the way this works and flies is that they haven't overcomplicated anything. If you look at that manual and look at all the pinouts, everything that you need to do and all the steps that you need to follow are taken care of. And with this single cable connecting into this four in one, you can connect all the motors into here, put the power out the back, and you've got a quadcopter that's going to fly great and has a vector on screen display as well. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.